y'all what's going on guys shinigami here and uh yeah today we got the well-awaited anti-gank guide so for this video i'm gonna give you guys tips on how to better you know survive in anti-ganks and all that and i'm gonna show you a bunch of clips i got a, a few clips lined up here we're gonna start off by letting them play so you guys can see the whole clip or whatever and then after it's done then i'm gonna talk over it and pause in certain areas to uh give you guys my input and tips and all that so the main four tips i have for you guys is one play for your life just play for survival don't go out trying to hit a clip just if you want to clip them just let the clip happen but don't go out here trying to be new age faram or something like that against four optimal andes it's not gonna work and i do want to go ahead and say right now if you're going up against four optimal competitive gamers you're not surviving an anti-gank i'm gonna tell you that right now those boys know exactly what they're doing they're communicating and 100 to 0 ganks exist in this game if you don't know what i'm talking about it's when people uh optimally gank you to the point where you just die and don't get revenge if you're going up against four optimal andes they'll be doing that and the chances of you surviving are very slim they have to mess up but but anyways back to the tip number two i would say when you do attack be quick and efficient don't try to do something super long like some random shigoki charge heavy for absolutely no reason three make sure you know your kit i'm going to be showing you anti-ganks with tiandi and Janhu. and for these characters i know you know what the best tools are for example both of their zones are really good for anti-ganking you're going to want to use those four most importantly do not thirst i have a clip of me thirsting and yeah just don't thirst Five, make sure you have your situational awareness. It definitely helps. Keep an eye out for environmentals like fire, ledges, uh, spikes. Keep an eye out for that. But without further ado, let's get into the first clip of me anti-ganking in Dominion. All right, so that's a clip right there. Now let's play it back so I can give you guys the run back of, you know, my thoughts during the, that anti-gank and all that. So really in the beginning here, there was just nothing special. I was just continuing as if it was a 1v1 because I noticed Shaman in the back there. She was uh, kind of too far away to hit whatever she was trying to hit me with. I think at first she was just uh, planning to play with my indicators, but as soon as that didn't work, she stepped in some more, but let's continue. So right there, I noticed Shaman was getting a little too close, so I zoned right there because one, zone has some pretty good tracking, two, I wanted to, you know, either one, get her to back up, or two, hit her, and then I soft fainted the zone for a kick so I could do a dodge heavy because I knew Scent was coming in with an attack. A lot of times you'll notice during anti-ganks is like, when you're focused on one person, another person is probably going to try to hit you or something like that. So I noticed I'm focused on Shaman. So now that I'm attacking Shaman, what is Scent gonna do? Scent is going to, you know, try to attack me. So that's when I soft fainted the kick for a dodge heavy so I can get from Shaman to Centurion. That way I can get away from Shaman and closer to Scent. That makes it harder for Shaman to hit me and stun me and you know, all that fun stuff. Now right there, I did another soft feint into a dodge heavy because I knew Shaman was probably going to attack me because you know, lunge moves. Now I didn't know if she was going to do a dodge heavy or dodge forward heavy or the bash. So I just, you know, guessed clearly she did the bash and now we're at the wall. So you can clearly see Scent charging that punch up. 
So now let's see what we do. The plan there was to just make a read and play for survival. I did not want to interrupt scent because variable charged attacks. So yeah, I would have just been punched in the face and you know, stun city. So yeah. So as you saw there, I just tried to be quick and efficient there, saw fanning the dodge heavy for a dodge light, hit shaman, then tried to focus on scent, but shaman's getting a little too close, so let's see what happens now. Once again, you know, attacking shaman, as one would, and then I noticed, or I had a feeling, centurion was still in the back, and he could have hit me. So I just decided to dodge. So what I did there, I tried to lock onto Shaman so I could get some external damage. Now, if you guys don't know what externals are, basically, if I'm swinging at someone else and you happen to be in the way, you get hit. That's pretty much an external. So I did the heavy there because Sentinel's right there and he can't block it. You can't, well, block. You, he can't parry it. You can't parry externals. So keep that in mind. Uh, then after doing that, I tried to throw him off with, you know, a couple lights and all that. Then I switched to the zone, however the zone did not hit him for some strange reason. But yeah, now we're here. So there my plan was to just overwhelm Centurion with, you know, offense. And clearly it worked, now Centurion is down, and it's just the one we going from here on out. Yeah, basically the rest of that is just me doing optimal Tiandi things, or trying to. Optimal Tiandi is a lot of light spam, pretty much, because Tiandi doesn't really have offense. So yeah, your best offense is really the chain light, 400 milliseconds, pretty fast. Now we can just go on to the next clip. I wanna go over the oopsie clip. So once again, there's a clip where we made a big oopsie. This is why I say don't thirst, but we survived anyways, magically. Okay, now I can restart and explain to you guys why that is indeed a big oopsie. Now, it turned out great, and it will turn out great for, you know, a lot of people. However, it's still a stupid move to uh, charge after someone because they're low. Now, doing that can result in you, well, dying very quickly. Now, right there, I tried to just keep Shaman, or well, I locked on the Valkyrie to keep Shaman like at the external so I could block or parry because she was doing the zone. Now, this clip was a while ago, so I'm assuming that maybe I missed a parry because usually when I go to lock on to someone else in order, you know, if someone's hit me with something like that, then I would try to parry. But I'm assuming I thought a 400 millisecond uh, soft faint light was coming and it just didn't. So yeah, that's how we're there. Right there, I was just doing a little target swapping. Uh, now, target swapping is something that you definitely need to be doing. Which, I mean, I already kind of showed that in the first clip. So, the reason why you should target swap is, you know, kind of like how I was explaining in the first one. So, if you're attacking one guy, then the other person is probably going to charge up something to hit you. Now, when you target swap, it'd probably be best if you had something to trade with, but... If you don't have anything to trade with, then just do what's uh, like your quickest attack option I would recommend. Now here's the oopsie. The shaman is running to the healing zone, and I want the kill. 
Now what should I have done in this situation? I probably should have stayed to finish off Valkyrie, which you saw that I obviously can do. But I chose to chase the shaman. Very unwise move. As you saw there, I lost, you know, it's, it's, you know, decent amount of health. Now that could have turned out really badly. Valkyrie was hitting us with those lights. We didn't parry or block a single one. Then she got us with the sweep. Now, as you saw, a Lawbringer was in the healing zone. Why he didn't come out and throw a top heavy or something? I have no idea. Would I have done that if I was that Lawbringer? Absolutely. But he did not. So we lived. Now continue. So here we finally got revenge. Now, like I said, this isn't a smart move because this could have turned out horribly. Shaman could have, you know, parried some stuff. He could have decimated us and got us trapped. We could have gotten stun locked, like hit stunned, and we could have died. Yeah, a lot of things could have gone bad here, but they did not. Now there, I made a big brain read because Valkyrie is a silly little gamer. I had a feeling she would attack me there, so I used an external crush encounter. Now, if someone, that's basically me going for a crush or a dodge light on the shaman, then the Valk goes to attack me, then boom, crush encounter, you already know how it is. Now, shaman's dead, it's just a 1v1 from here on out. There, I'm just kicking Valk into the wall, you know, Tandy things, you know, you get a free heavy after the, you know, after a kick by the wall. Even though they could just dodge out, Valkyrie does not, and she gets sent to the gamer zone. Now, let's take a look at some Gen Hu. Now, anti ganking with Gen Hu is definitely a lot easier than with Tandy because he has a lot more external capabilities, a lot more range. Funny enough, Gen Hu is better in 4v4 situations than Tandy, and Tandy is better than Gen Hu in. 1v1 situations. But anyways, let's just get on with the clip. Now there's a little bit of a funny moment right here. The uh, Warmonger <laughs> goes for a guard break there, and then I go for a guard break. I just did that because it was funny looking, but yeah, let me just let you guys watch the clip. Now aside from the funny moment, this was a... I really like this anti-gank. So there, you know, like I said, know your kit. So I know with Jenhu, if Konk, or I'm pretty sure a lot of people with all guards, and I can do it to Warlord too, I can do it to Kyoshin, and all that. They go into their all guard, and I zone, I have enough recovery to dodge away from their supposedly guaranteed attack. So I knew Conk would do that, so I zone there, zone one for uh, to get him out of that, two in case Warmonger were to try to attack me. Now if she were to try to attack me, like I said, a lot of range, zone, boom bam, you get smacked in the face. There we go. Go back to the clip. Like right there, once again. I tried to zone, it didn't work, got hit, it's okay, so then I did a heavy, knowing that, okay, if I do an external heavy while Conk is an all guard or whatever, once again, Jenhu, I have dodge recovery, I can dodge. Like I said, know your kit, very, very important for 1v1s and anti ganks. Now, right there, that, that was a big oopsie. Um, I definitely should have maybe played for the deflect, but. Another thing I want to mention, when you're getting anti-gank, a lot of the times you should not 
go for a deflect or a crush encounter i would suggest really only parrying unless you know the people you're fighting are oyster brains and you can you know get away with it but a lot of the times i just prefer to go for parries builds up revenge you know all that fun stuff oh so right there as you can see got revenge i did my out of stamina punish or whatever because i knew these two were just two silly little gooses so i could clearly get away with it and then afterwards dodge into warmonger bash her to get her out of an attack like i said target swapping then i switch to conqueror because i had a feeling what if he hits me then i do a zone and like i said know your kit and then dodge recovery because you know like i said gen who to get away out of a sticky situation and then the zone also in case warmonger were to magically be in the vicinity to hit me but yeah back to clip now i did that uh dodge light there so i could kind of get away from conk because a lot of the times i don't want to be like sandwiched in between multiple people i'd like for them to either be in front of me or well away from me and i play two quote dodge specialists even though they're not really dodge specialists but whatever so i like to use my movement to give me you know at least some form of advantage or whatever now if you don't have dodge recovery then you just gotta make do with what you got i guess just work on defense start doing parries like i said don't do crush encounters or deflex but yeah mostly play for survival go for your parries block do not try to be rambo or something like that don't try to anti-gank the entire u.s army or something but back to the clip okay i know what you're thinking oh you ate three at the same attack back to back you trash it okay for one i tried the zone the conk because all guard i wasn't gonna get caught lacking by all guard so i tried the zone there got hit with that the second one, I just zoned because Conk was gonna... I knew because I was hit-stunned, he was probably salivating at the thought of damage. So, I decided to risk it for the biscuit. I zoned, and if you're at the right side of Gen Hu while he's doing the zone, then it comes out, like, super fast. So, I knew that would hit him. And then Warmonger does her thing. It's whatever. I'll eat the damage because now it's a 1v1, and... I 100% am confident in me winning against uh, the Warmonger. See, a lot of the time when you're anti-ganking people like this, a lot of them don't really, they're not exactly that good, so you can more than likely pull through. If you killed one, then you can kill the other without a doubt. Now I want to go back to Tiandi with this Elam anti-gank that was kind of messy, but it worked either way. Give me them cheeks. <gasps> of course, you know I have to do it. But as you can see here, using situational awareness because I knew for one they were gonna gank me. Uh, I knew the pirate had her fourth feet, and I knew Gladiator is well, Gladiator and stupid. So yeah. So as you can see, when the clip starts, I know pirate and the glad are approaching. One, the glad is on top of a ledge. He might try to drop attack me. Might not. Either way, don't want to find out. So I'm gonna get away from the situation and pirate's uh fourth feet is stupid and sent you to the ground so i didn't want to be in that position in this small like cavern not cavern small whatever type of structure area this is so 
I just simply disengage and run away. Pirate shoots the blunderbuss. I fight for my life. I try to get the shield. Clearly, I don't get it in time, and then the U.S. Army shows up. Now, also use situational awareness to identify the biggest threat in the bunch. Now, pirate's fourth feet already gone. I know the pirate I fought it uh, isn't really that good of a pirate, and it's kind of strange saying a pirate can be good, but I knew she didn't have the capabilities or knowledge to try to keep me stunned. So the biggest threat in the situation is the gladiator with his toe stab. Now, he did hit me with a lot of toe stabs, but it did feed a lot of revenge. So it's kind of, you know, it's a good trade, I suppose. But none of these Neanderthals actually took advantage of uh, the toe stabs uh, stun capability. So yeah, I live. As you can see, feeding a lot of revenge. They're not taking advantage of that. They should have, honestly. So I get into revenge, and I start trying to be quick and efficient. I don't do anything that takes a super long time, and yeah, pirate gets taken out. So now that pirate's taken out, Highlander uses his fourth feet. Why does he use his fourth feet? Because he's stupid. Now who else has their fourth feet? Oh yeah, me. So I knew one, these guys are about as sharp as a bowling ball, and two, I can just live honestly i mean these guys were i knew no offense to any of these you know people but i knew these guys were basically free so in a 1v1 i knew i had it whoever i killed i knew i was gonna kill the last one standing so as you can see highlander and gladiator are two silly little gooses gladiator goes for the dodge light as soon as highlander does his whatever i went to parry highlander and immediately after pairing Highlander, I noticed I parried Glad too, so I'm like, sick, free damage. Thanks. Glad gets taken out, now it's 1v1. Highlander gets the shield, I knew it wouldn't be that big of an issue. So I just simply do Shinigami things. I didn't want to go for the light parry there because I was nervous, but I knew he was a silly little goose, so dodge heavy into... <laughs> and they're done. And that's a great way to end a match honestly now this last clip is just very i'm just gonna play the clip it was i was confused and scared there was just so much going on let's just show it As I said, very confusing and scary. Never been ganked by four Highlanders at once. Very interesting experience. Uh, if I heard Dunma Glass uh, one more time, I was going to punch a hole in the uh, fabric of time and space. Interesting uh, concept there. But let's uh, let's review what was going on. Because there was a lot of anger in this, and this was like my second match on, so I just didn't parry anything. But uh, yeah. So, I wasn't trying to lock onto that red Highlander. I knew he wasn't trying to gank me. So, like, I was trying to lock onto this white one right here. But, uh, because For Honor has the best two lock on systems in the game, uh, I was not able to lock onto him. So, there, I'm just being kind of, you know, quick and efficient. I uh, did my dodge light because it's fast and then tried to do the zone one because the zone is fast and two because I want to hit that uh, Highlander on the external but it did not hit him then all of Scotland showed up so here we are he's going for parries and revenge now because I'm confused and I don't know what's going on 
tried to lock onto this Highlander who I killed with lights because quick and efficient. Um, but like I said, optimal, not optimal, like I said, great lock ons. So, yeah. So now we're back to Dunma Glass City. The white one stopped attacking me. I don't know why, but I decided to take advantage of that since I knew he wasn't going to hit me anymore. So I took it, take out this one. Now he starts hitting me again. I got hit out of my dodge heavy because I'm a dodge specialist and we just have the best dodges in the game. Um, so I do another one for some strange reason. Then I do that. I don't know why I did another one, but it's basically two 1v1s now. The anti-gang portion is done. Um, this Highlander shows up. I did not want him to res because I did not want to hear Dunma Glass 800 times again. And... Boom. He gets taken out. So I uh, hope this helps somebody. We're going to continue with, you know, what we usually do, videos, stuff like that. We got the anti-gank out the way. We got a challenge run. Uh, not really a challenge run, but uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going into duels because I put a post up on Instagram and people want to see this. We're going to go into duels and we're going to do a palm strike only video. We can only palm strike for damage. We can do the heavy after the palm strike, um, obviously. Uh, if somebody, you know, if I get a guard break, then I have to punish the person with a palm strike. If I get someone on the ground, then I have to punish them with a palm strike. If I parry a light, then I have to punish the light with a palm strike. I'm just not going to parry lights, honestly. Uh, there's no point if I just have to palm strike, but yeah. Uh, keep an eye out for that. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. hope this helped somebody. Uh, if you like the music in this video, make sure to check out the playlist I got called Prod Rhythm and the Homie G. It's got all the good music I use in my videos, all made by Prod Rhythm himself. He's a phenomenal artist. If you want to hear more of his tracks, I got a link in the description to his channel, so you can go there, check him out, give him a sub, all that fun stuff. If you want to get in contact with me, I got links to my Instagram, Twitter, and Discord in the description. In the Discord, we got the meme section in case you guys want to drop some spicy memes. We got a drip section in case you guys want to show off your latest outfits. And we even got a training room in case you guys want to figure out how to play or counter against certain characters and all that fun stuff. And if you guys want 10% off of that W, make sure you click the link I have in the description below. Use my code Shiny Society in all caps for that sweet, sweet 10% off. Now, as you guys can see, W's got a lot of things. You know, they they got energy drinks that increase your focus and reflexes. I mean, two things that Fortnite players desperately need, and that can definitely help you in these anti-ganks. You know, low-key, this Monkey Madness drink is looking pretty nice. I might have to try that one. As you guys see, they got the drinks, they got the they got the cups, they even got the hats, and they got the shirt. They even got the stickers, and they got anime girls on them, and I don't know if YouTube will allow me to show uh, that, so I will not. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Now embrace your dreams. And protect your honor. Shinigami out, y'all.